I hope I'm audible and visible. Can you all give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine? Uh, welcome in this dermatology session with me, Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your need PG educator on the best online platform that is an academy. We have many new batches which is about to start, that is target need PG batch which is starting in June. And we have a need PG TND batch which is again starting in June. So I request all of you to please be a part here. This is the price list of an academy subscriptions. You can use my code for need PG. The code is Cheshta10, C-H-E-S-T-A. The code is Cheshta 10, that is C-H-E-S-T-A 10. I hope uh, you all are ready uh, and let's start with the discussion of the amazing session. Everyone give me a quick thumbs up if you are ready for this. Fine, yes. So let's start with the first question of the today's session. And this is an MCQ marathon where I will be giving you a lot of questions. Uh, targeting one question per minute. So all of you, uh, we have a 50 year old woman with a painless swelling on her left foot. The swelling started after a banal penetrating injury on the sole of her left foot. X-ray shows osteolytic lesions of the terrace and the patient reports granule discharging through the lesions. What will be the diagnosis? Everyone. Good evening to all of you. Please tell me the correct answer of this question, everyone. Okay. Now the correct answer of this question is uh, for this particular barrel penetrating injury, the answer should be you my causes. Now let us discuss what exactly this question is all about. We need a plain paper. Now what is mycetoma? It's a triad of swelling, sinus, discharge and granules. We have three types of mycetomas, two types sorry, U mycetoma and actinomycetoma, actinomycetoma. Both of them will have the triad of swelling, sinus and granules. But the difference is color of granule here is black while color of granule here is yellow to red. This is slowly growing while this is fast growing. You have more deformity here, more deformity here and you have less deformity here. You have more deformity here and less deformity here. So please remember this is very important difference and because you can see the color of the granule this is swelling you have sinuses and you have a black color granule you are dealing with a very classical example of u mice 2 next question Anyone? Identify the correct match of Wood's lamp finding. Blue green color for petriasis versicolor, yellow for erythrasma, green for pseudomonas or coral red for vitiligo. Which of the following is the correct statement? Anyone? Very nice, Ruhi. A 
amazing all my dear students very nice all of you the correct answer of this question is identify the correct match of woods lamp finding the only correct statement here is option number 3 Pitriasis versicolor will have a yellow color fluorescence. Erythrasma will have a coral red. And vitiligo has a ivory white fluorescence. So only one student is right. The answer is option number 3. Very nice. The next question is on your screen. Which of the following drug will cause the following nail changes? Which of the following drug will cause the following nail changes? Which of the following will cause the following nail changes? Everyone. Very nice, Ruhi, Anj, nice, the answer to this question is option number 4. Now, Zerubudin will have a very characteristic feature of Melanonychia. In addition to the skin pigmentation, it will also cause the pigmentation of the nail. Okay. So, which of the following drug will cause the following nail change? The correct answer of this question is option number four, that is Zidovudin. The correct answer is option number four, that is Zidovudin. Next question. Twelve year old boy presented with a three month history of asymptomatic axillary rash that fluctuated in severity but never got cleared. He was otherwise normal. What other test can be done to come to a diagnosis for this particular patient? Anybody can tell me the answer here. Anyone? I hope I am audible and visible to all of you. A 12 year old boy presented with a 3 month history of asymptomatic axillary rash that fluctuated in the severity but never get clear. He was otherwise normal. What other test can be done to diagnose this patient? This is a very classical example of erythrasma. It's hyperpigmented plaque. We have a hyperpigmented macule in the axilla which is asymptomatic. For erythrasma, you will do a woods lamp to look for coral red appearance. For woods lamp, you will do a coral red appearance. Clear? 12 year old boy with a 3 month history of asymptomatic axillary rash that is fluctuated in severity but never get cleared. What is the answer? The answer is option number 1. Woods lamp examination. Okay, clear. Next.
A man with history of diabetes and alcoholism presented with chronic suppurative nodules with granular bodies on the light microscopy. Culture rapidly grows Staphylococcus aureus colony. What is the clinical term describing this type of infectious lesion? The correct answer is option number 4. Botryomycosis. Now this looks very similar to that of mycetoma. But when you culture the mycetoma, you will never get Staphylococcus aureus colony. It means you are dealing with a condition which resembles mycetoma but it is a bacterial infection and the name given to that condition is Botryomycosis. It is more common in diabetic patients or those who are immunocompromised like alcoholic patients. Okay. Next. Anyone? What is the answer here? What is erythema multiforme? First tell me that. Good. Now what is erythema multiforme? In erythema multiforme, you develop a very classical target lesion. It manifests clinically as target lesion where you have a central necrosis then you have a edematous zone the middle one is edema I hope it is visible to all of you and the outermost is the redness so you have erythema edema and central necrosis this is a very classical target lesion now the question is which of the following will never show the erythema multiforme like clinical features the answer to this question is option number 1. Herpes and mycoplasma, they are the common infection. They are the common cause of erythema multiforme. While in SLE patients, sometimes you develop the lesions of erythema multiforme and those cases are called as Rowell's syndrome. Those cases are known as Rowell's syndrome. Okay. I hope this point is clear to all my dear students. Can I get a quick thumbs up from all of you? Amazing. Actually associated with carbamazepine induced drug rash. Anyone? Actually associated with carbamazepine induced drug rash. Very important, please remember the carbamazepine is a very common drug which is known for inducing the side effects specifically the drug reactions like SJS and toxic epidermal necrolysis they are the very commonly implicated drugs which present with SJS and TED now the chances of having the drug reactions they are more frequent when patient has a very specific type of HLA associated so can you tell me what is that HLA among the options provided anyone can tell me the answer <clears throat> Very nice, amazing one of you. Actually associated with carbamazepine induced drug reaction, please remember the answer is option number 3. It is very frequently found HLA in the Asian population. Okay, And that is why in Asians, whenever you give carbamazepine, you have to keep a check if patient develops SJS or 10 or he started developing some reactions in the form of itching or something like that, you have to withdraw carbamazepine. And it is always best to give something else instead of carbamazepine. You can give another anti-epileptic drug 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल सोडियम वेलप्रोइट विच इज कंसिडर टू बी अ सेफ ड्रग अदर ड्रग्स लाइक कार्बोमेजीन फिनोबाबिटोन दे आर ओन ऑल नोन फॉर इट्स ड्रग रिएक्शन सो द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन नंबर थ्री द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन योर स्क्रीन रिसेंटली ट्रायल मेडिकेशन फॉर बेसल सेल कार्सिनोमा रिसेंटली ट्रायल मेडिकेशन फॉर बी सी सी recently trial medication for basal cell carcinoma crisaborol epremilast vismodegib or brodalumab anyone yes so recently we have seen that in the pathogenesis of basal cell carcinoma sonic hedgehog pathway plays a very important role sonic hedgehog pathway plays a very important role in basal cell carcinoma the sonic hedgehog pathway plays a very very important role and we are nowadays using a drug which is vismodegib a sonic hedgehog pathway inhibitor another drug is sonidegib both these drugs are used nowadays in the patients of basal cell carcinoma crisaborol is used in atopic dermatitis which is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor it comes in topical formulation epremilast is used in the patient of psoriasis again phosphodiesterase inhibitor we have other indications like alopecia areata while brodalumab is il17 receptor blocker which is used in the patients of psoriasis used in the patients of psoriasis is that clear to all my dear students next question the most common neurological tumor associated with neurofibromatosis type 2 the most common tumor associated with nf type 2 optic glioma acoustic neuroma cafe au lait macule or meningioma the most common neurological tumor associated with nf part 2 very nice it is acoustic neuroma optic glioma is a feature of neurofibromatosis type 1 i can see that uh, many students are not answering the question i would request all of you to please participate in this uh, uh, mcq session because in a way like if you if you will answer this it will be like a answer and question and answer session like a tnd session and i will be definitely explaining you the uh, more detailed discussions in my plus classes so if anybody is interested you can just use my code and get your subscription today Okay, so the most common neurological tumor which is associated with neurofibromatosis type two is optic glioma. Next question: Identify this lesion: Conan's tumor, onychomycosis, onychodystrophy, onychogryphosis. Identify this lesion. Conan's tumor, onychomycosis, onychodystrophy, onychogryphosis. Very nice, all of you. Very well done. Yes, the correct answer is Conan's tumor, and it is a feature of tuberous sclerosis. Can anybody tell me what is the another name for tuberous sclerosis? Anyone? What is the another name for tuberous sclerosis? Bonvillers disease. 
Now here you have number one, uh, you have features like angiokeratomas or angiofibroma on the face known as adenoma sebaceum. I am only writing the cutaneous feature. Second, you have hematomatous patch on the back, lumbosacral region. Then you have similar growths on the nail fold, Conan's tumor. Hypopigmented macules, which is known as ash leaf spot. Now these are the major criteria. Okay, these are the major criteria which you see in these patients. But there are minor criteria also. I am only talking about the cutaneous lesions. Confetti like pigmentation. These are one of the minor criteria. And even the mucosal changes or the dental changes where you have dental pit. You have other features in the internal organs like renal cyst, bone cyst. Then you have rhabdomyoma, cardio rhabdomyoma, angiolipomyomas. All these features, they are the internal features which you see in the patients of tuberous sclerosis. So I hope this point is clear. Identify this lesions, conan tumor, onychomycosis, onychodystrosis and onychoclyphosis. So the answer is option number one. Confetti means what? Confetti means uh, if this is the skin, you will see hyperpigmented salt and pepper like appearance. This is known as confetti pigmentation. Understood Kiran? Salt pepper like you have drops of hyperpigmentation known as confetti like pigmentation. If this is clear, I want a thumbs up from you Kiran. Now what is the answer? Follicular hyperkeratosis is because of deficiency of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E or zinc. Amazing all of you. Deepika, Kiran, Ruhi, Dr. CP. The correct answer, the follicular Hyperkeratosis is related to vitamin A. It is related to vitamin A deficiency. You will classically develop the follicular hyperkeratosis on the extensors. And in the recent NEET PG 2020-21 question, we get an image of what is known as phrynoderma or toad skin. What is known as phrynoderma or the toad skin. I hope this point is clear. In addition to this, vitamin A deficiency will always have dryness of skin and conjunctiva and it will cause what is known as bitot spot. The initial presentation will be nictalopia, delayed dark adaptation. Delayed dark adaptation. Okay, so these are some of the features which you will see. Delayed dark adaptation. The next question is on your computer screen. amazing all of you. The allergens responsible for this condition is paraphenylindiamine, formaldehyde, epoxy resin or ammonia. The allergen responsible for this condition would be Yes, very nice. Uh, here you can see that we are doing or we are applying hair dye 
after application of the hair dye you can see that the patient develops erythema on the margins of the hair and there is swelling of the face this is a very very characteristic feature of ppd which is allergic contact dermatitis to the hair dye allergic contact dermatitis to the allergic contact dermatitis to the hair dye next question identify the test identify this test anyone it's a simple test where you can see that few strips are seen on the upper back and these strips are having some allergens actually some small micro pores aluminum chamber which is known as fin chamber and this is nothing but patch test for contact dermatitis next question falls about trichorexis invaginata which is very classically known as bamboo hair deformity now if you look at this image let me zoom this image for you you can see that one part of the hair is entering into the another can you see one part is entering into the another this is like an into susception and because of this appearance it is known as bamboo hair and ball and socket deformity and it is one of the feature of netherton syndrome now the question is what is the other feature in netherton you will get erythroderma and a patient will have a background of atopic dermatitis you have a classical cutaneous lesions which is ichthyosis linearis circum scripta ichthyosis linearis circum scripta if this is clear i request a quick thumbs up from all my dear students ichthyosis linearis circum scripta okay ichthyosis linearis circum scripta now the question which is wrong here is there is no problem in the melanin the problem is in the hair shaft structure the melanin is absolutely fine and that is why option number 4 becomes incorrect option number 4 becomes incorrect here next about granuloma annulare all are true except about granuloma annulare which of the following is true amazing all of you the answer is option number 4 granuloma annulare is an example of necro biotic disorder it is an example of necro biotic disorder what does it means it is an example of necro biotic disorder means here you have collagen damage you have collagen damage necrobiotic disorder where you have a collagen damage and you have collagenolysis and there is development of granulomas around the degenerated collagen now how it appears clinically look at this image you will see annular lesions like this can you see the annular lesions all over yes this is a very classical feature of granuloma annulare it is mainly seen in the patient who is having diabetes 
and it is mainly seen on the sun exposed areas because sun damage is also one of the precipitating feature for treating this you need steroids so all the three statement is right but the false statement is option number 4 they are not at all ulcerative no so they are usually ulcerative this is a wrong statement next question necrobiotic lipoid curate okay so uh, uh, nkm that is something different necrobiotic lipoidica or uh, necrobiosis lipoidica that is also seen in a diabetic patient but here you will see necrotic lesions mainly on the anterior part of the lower limb that is against the bony prominences and it is one of the feature of the damage of uh, damage to the skin by the increase in uh, the sugar level of these individuals okay now please tell me the correct answer of this question a patient has onychomycosis he should be prescribed a nail lacquer containing what is the answer very nice onychomycosis means nail fungus and for treating it we need a lacquer formulation which is a better formulation for application and we have only two drugs one is amrolfen and another is cyclopyrox amrolfen and cyclopyrox which is used for development of now the patient with purple blue purple asymptomatic lesions on the face on the sun exposed areas what is the likely diagnosis anyone can tell me the correct answer here bluish purple asymptomatic lesion what is the correct answer very nice the answer is lichen planus and it has a very characteristic variant which is known as lichen plano pigmentosus lichen plano pigmentosus it will present with a very very characteristic pigmented lesion I hope it is clear. Deepika, Te Tirat, Ruhi, everyone. The next question is on your screen. Fifty-five-year-old farmer with a black mole on the cheek. It increases in the size, becomes irregular, and invades the deep tissue. What can be the diagnosis here? What can be the diagnosis here? acral lentigo maligna lentigo maligna melanoma superficial spreading or the nodular type of melanoma very nice amazing so a 55 year old men with a black mole on the cheek which increase in the size becomes irregular invade the deep tissue what is the correct answer please remember the correct answer for this particular question will be option number now one thing is that it is something from melanoma this we are clear but why it is nodular melanoma so please remember we have divided melanoma into two broad categories those variants where you have horizontal growth okay and those varieties where you have vertical growth spread the one where you have horizontal growth spread and another where you have vertical growth spread okay the horizontal growth spread means if this is your skin the melanoma cells first proliferate within the epidermis 
the melanoma cells first proliferates within the epidermis like this and then they spread in a horizontal direction but what is vertical growth spread if this is your skin the melanoma cells will go down like this it will go down instead of spreading horizontally they will involve the dermis very soon they will involve the dermis very very soon like this so this is called as vertical growth spread and uh, the previous one is known as horizontal growth spread the examples of the horizontal growth spread is superficial spreading type lentigo maligna type superficial spreading type lentigo maligna type and what else what is the next the third one is acral melanoma while for the vertical growth spread for the vertical growth spread the only one example is nodular type of melanoma clear all of you can i get a quick thumbs up from all my dear students so this is a very easy and very simple method uh, to remember that the deep spread is more in those where you have vertical spread so the answer becomes option number 4 next question so please tell me the correct answer please tell me the correct answer here a patient with hiv with a white plaque on uvula pseudo ifa was seen on the microscopy what is the correct answer very nice pseudo ifa on microscopy it means you are dealing with candida because the budding yeast the budding yeast of the candida will appear like a pseudo hyphae and in hiv patient the chances of oral mucocutaneous candidiasis is very high the chance of oral mucocutaneous candidiasis is very high so the correct answer of the question becomes option number 1 if this is clear can i get a quick thumbs up from all of you the next question which of the following does not cause urethritis in male which of the following does not cause urethritis in me which of the following does not cause urethritis in me anyone very nice now urethritis we have classified in two broad category one is gonococcal urethritis and another is non gonococcal urethritis The example of gonococcal urethritis is Neisseria gonorrhea. While the example of non-gonococcal urethritis is Chlamydia, Urea plasma, Mycoplasma, Chlamydia, Urea plasma, Mycoplasma, and what else? Trichomoniasis. so which is not given hemophilus ducre because hemophilus ducre causes genital ulcer hemophilus ducre causes genital ulcer it will not cause urethritis now there are many students who have marked option number 3 because they were thinking that vaginalis so males do not have vagina so vaginalis we cannot use for a male but please read the question carefully we are not asking for vaginitis we are asking you for urethritis so even trichomonas vaginalis can cause urethritis in a male patient 
Is that clear to all of you? It's a very simple concept you all should know. A very very important concept which everybody should know. Okay? Any confusion? Next. Very nice, Tirat, Ashima, Rocky. Child presents with a colloidal membrane. That is a clue. Colloidal membrane is a very tight membrane which surrounds the baby at the time of birth. And because it is so tight that you will see that the ears, the lips, the eye, eye uh, eyelids, they are all stretched. So you have eclabion, you have uh, ectropion, everything is seen. Now this membrane will desiccate on its own after almost a month. And the underlying baby will have a feature of that ichthyosis. We have three examples where you see colloidal membrane at the time of birth. One is lamellar ichthyosis. Another is bathing suit ichthyosis which is actually the part bathing suit ichthyosis is actually the part of the bathing suit ichthyosis is actually the part of uh, the lamellar ichthyosis only and last is non bullous ichthyosiform erythroderma non bullous ichthyosiform erythroderma is that clear to all of you? Very nice. So the correct answer is option number 3. Now, uh, I am very sorry. Yes, this is the next question. Very well done all of you. Very nice. Now the pigmentary disorders or I should say hyperpigmentary disorders they are classified into two broad categories depending upon the location of the pigment. If pigment is present in the epidermis it is known as epidermal melanin disease. If the pigment is present in the epidermis, it is known as epidermal melanin disease and if the pigment is present in the dermis, it is known as dermal melanin disease. So epidermal melanin disease and dermal melanin disease. Epidermal melanin diseases, they are mainly Baker's nevus which is more prominent at the time of puberty. You have freckles and lentigens. Baker's nevus, freckles and lentigens. For dermal melanin disease, you have Mongolian spot, nevus of Ota and uh, I'll write it here Nevus of Eto. How to differentiate them? Please remember that the epidermal melanin disease will appear brown in color when you see it from outside, while dermal melanin disease will appear, appear blue or purple in appearance. So now I think this question becomes very easy. Nevus of Ito and Mongolian, they are dermal, while Baker's Nevus and Freckle, they are epidermal. So, the correct answer is option number 1. Clear? I hope this question is very easy and clear to everyone. Now, this is an example of dermal melanin disease, bluish color pigment, dermal melanin disease. This is Nevus 
of ota which is on the face unilaterally and another is nevus of ito nevus of ota and nevus of ito i hope this point is clear to everyone next question is on your screen what is the answer here only 15 minutes more so i want everyone to be very quick the assertion says that topical hydroquinone is effective in melasma and the reason says that hydroquinone is a tyrosinase inhibitor so which of the following statement is true good now in melasma the melanocytes are forming more pigment and i hope everybody knows that for production of pigment you need tyrosin which is converted to dopa in presence of tyrosinase enzyme and this dopa through multiple steps converts into two type of pigment eumelanin and pheomelanin eumelanin and pheomelanin is that clear now for reducing the production of pigment you need to inhibit this enzyme and that is done by hydroquinone so no enzyme no pigment there will be improvement in the melasma so topical hydroquinone is effective in melasma correct the reason is because it is a tyrosinase inhibitor so both these are right clear i hope no one has any confusion for this next question anyone so you diagnosed a patient with vitiligo on history of physical examination woods lamp examination which of the following is also warranted the correct answer of this question is option number now vitiligo is an autoimmune condition so other autoimmune conditions like thyroid diabetes pernicious anemia myasthenia gravis they all are present in association with vitiligo but the one which is having the most common association is the thyroid diseases so thyroid diseases has the most common association with the patients of vitiligo moving to the next question this is a easy question very nice 15 cm macule on an adolescent male undergoes changes such as coarseness growth of hair acne what is your diagnosis melanocytic nevi baker's nevus sebaceous nevus or comedo nevus 15 cm hyperpigmented macule on an adolescent male undergoes changes such as so it's a very classical lesion of baker's nevus it usually occurs at the time of adolescence that is at the time of puberty because they have androgen receptors over them so androgens they they are when when do you, when do you get more androgens whenever you have your puberty so at that time it becomes prominent 
associated with hyper trichosis okay there is a lot of hairs and sometimes there is also the acne form eruptions okay you can also get acne form eruptions in these individuals next question is on your computer screen anyone anyone can tell me the answer here very nice so a 40 year old lady presented with the features like a brown patch on the cheek uh, she was not on any treatment like contraceptive pills she observed that it has increased after the first delivery and also after the second which of the following is incorrect the thyroid function test uh, is normal the correct statement is only option number 3 this is a very classical example of melasma now what are the factors associated with melasma oral contraceptive pills thyroid disease pregnancy and sunlight so these are some of the important features which is associated with melasma is that clear to all my dear students i think it's a very easy question now so the only correct statement which is left with us is option number 3 the next question is on your computer screen only 10 minutes left so i want all my students to please answer this question quickly 10 minutes are left we are done with uh, 50 minutes of this session okay so a 30 year old patient with deep pigmented patches on the medial aspect of both the foot and the feathery margin can you tell me what can be the diagnosis if there is feathery margins attached anyone yes if it is feathery margin it has to be patient of vitiligo and in vitiligo you will give immunosuppressants like steroids calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus and phototherapy but there is no role of retinoin so with this we are done with the today's session i thank to all the students for attending this class and if at all you are interested in getting the an academy subscription i request you to please use my code cheshta10 and get your an academy subscription now we will take these sessions every day on the same time i would highly recommend a 3 month subscription of an academy either plus or iconic we will be teaching the dermatology in detail so you need to take the subscription for that and this is the code if you want to take so my fmg students ini students and nepg students please go ahead and get your subscription